Armors. Hey Exiles, Chronic Painless here with the week 3 update in my Blade Vortex 319 League Starter Build Guide. In this video, I'll give another status update on my progress through the endgame and then share some more tips and alternative options for getting the most from your BV. As promised, I've taken this build through Wave 30 in the Simulacrum, all 7 Uber Pinnacles, and even the Trial Master, who turned out to be way easier than I expected. My final budget to clear the Uber Uber Elder, the hardest of the fights in my opinion, was about 60 Divines. I came pretty close with less investment, but as I've mentioned many times in my videos and on my stream, my potato level skills require an extra strength build to compensate for. And with those boxes checked, that's pretty much a wrap on the Lake of Calandra League for me. I'm going to stick around for some challenges and maybe a few theory crafting experiments, but min-maxing is in a rough state right now with the harvest changes, and I don't really have any interest in making jewelry to throw in Calandra's ethereal slot machine. Moving on. The first thing I want to talk about in this video are the results of my foray into pure glass cannonry. I had a blast throwing off the shackles of my defensive layers, but after a while, I really started to miss my old friend Molten Shell. When you're a potato like me, you're going to wind up taking some hits that you really should have dodged, and that's where Molten Shell comes in. Of course, Molten Shell does nothing without armor, and so I found myself adding Determination and Defiance Banner back into the build. Thankfully, the trade-off wasn't nearly as harsh as it would have been to get back my capped spell suppression and so I was able to keep blasting fast while still dying substantially less often thanks to my physical mitigation and the huge guard provided by the Molten Shell. For mapping, I'll leave the shell on a cast when damage taken setup, but I often make it manual for bosses. Timing a Molten Shell right before the boss's big telegraphed attack provides an extra layer of safety in case your dodging is less than adequate. A well-timed Molten Shell can even enable you to do more damage since you won't have to run away from the boss during their windup. When fighting Closus in the Simulacrum, for example, I was able to reliably blink straight at him during his leaping explosions and keep damaging him the whole time, thanks to my Molten Shell tanking the brunt of the damage. Overall, I can only endorse the pure glass cannon to players who really don't care about dying or god gamers who can dodge everything. For everyone else, adding at least armor to the build is pretty much essential since it provides a two-fold layer of defense and physical mitigation and the guard from the Molten Shell. Spell suppression is still an option for people who want to die even less or play even more lazily, but personally, I found that sacrificing it for damage made the build feel a lot better for my own playstyle. The next thing I want to touch on is an alternative option for the occultist ascendancies. Since we're doing cold damage and freeze immunity is essential, taking frigid wake seems like a no-brainer. However, malediction is sneakily strong and can save us three passive points from not needing whispers of doom. So even though the damage increase is slightly in favor of frigid wake, when comparing the two options in a vacuum, choosing Malediction and putting those three points towards damage will surely give you higher DPS overall. Both Ascendancies apply a 10% reduced damage dealt debuff to our enemies, and our enemies will be cursed and chilled in equal measure, so neither option gets an edge there. The brief freeze after chill from the Frigid Wake is completely useless for our purposes, and honestly for almost all purposes, so it can be safely ignored. That means the decision comes down to three passive points versus freeze and chill immunity. And with the easy availability of the Brine King Pantheon, I found the three passive point option very enticing this league due to the build's increased reliance on small cluster jewels. Of course, this also means we'll have to forgo the other Pantheons, and there are some very nice benefits there, so it is a lateral move to some degree. Neither option is going to make or break the build, I just thought it was interesting that Frigid Wake could be replaced despite seeming like such an obvious choice. Of course, in the endgame versions of the build, we're likely to run both of these ascendancies anyway, as we'll want to replace Profane Bloom with a source of physical damage explosion for better scaling. And speaking of endgame versions of the build, the last topic I want to address are the two best options for pumping your DPS to extreme levels, the Spell Bow and Double Corrupt Chests. With the nerfs to Harvest, 8 Link Helms and 9 Link Wands are going to be the stuff of legend in this league, costing multiple mirrors or requiring unfathomable RNG to craft. As a result, BV Blasters are turning back to the ancient technique of the Spellbow, since it is reliably craftable with essences, metacrafts, and basic currency. 
Using a bow comes with some big advantages, but it does mean giving up shield charge. First, the Asphyxia's Wrath Quiver provides a big damage boost and can even be corrupted for more physical as extra cold. Second, having your BV in your weapons means you can link more of your auras to a single enlightened gem in your chest piece, saving gem slots and currency. Just be careful that you don't buy a bow base with too high of a dex requirement, as we're already starved enough for that precious attribute. The alternative to the spell bow is a double corrupt chest. With the buff to tainted currency, six linking a corrupt chest no longer costs over a thousand veil orbs, therefore chasing double corruptions is vastly more affordable, since you don't have to six link a chest before risking it on the altar. A plus four chest is a massive DPS increase, often upwards of 50% more damage, and even a plus two with another solid implicit can be a very attractive option. If you're going to go this route, I'd recommend a carcass jack for damage or a brass dome for tankiness. You can also corrupt influenced chests, but that's going to be a lot more expensive for each attempt. That's all for this video. I'll probably post an update with my overall thoughts on the league soon, but this might be the end of the build guide updates unless I'm struck by a bolt of min-maxing motivation. I'll still be streaming on Twitch and answering questions in the Discord, so why don't you stop by sometime. And as always, stay painless.